the last topic in this series of lectures con is concerned with impulse and momentum of rigid bodies. Um, I'm going to write the equation for impulse and momentum of rigid body conceptually first. That is the total momentum of the system initially, so I'll subscript that with a 1, plus the total impulse All right, yeah, going from time 1 to time 2 is going to be equal to the total momentum after the impulse is applied. So we write, I'm writing this conceptually because now when we consider um, momentum and impulse, we have to consider both linear momentum and angular momentum and we have to consider the impulse of both forces and moments. Um, so what we will do for plane motion, we will look at the components of that equation and it reduces to three scalar equations. First, linear momentum in the x direction Second, linear moment, momentum in the y direction. And the third one is the moment, angular momentum plus the impulse due to moments equals the final angular momentum. So those are the three equations of motion that we will use for plane motion of rigid bodies and impulse and momentum type of problems. Now we know that the impulse of forces uh, is equal to the integral of the force over time, right? That's the impulse of a force. Now we've got to consider the impulse of mom moments, and that's just the integral of the moment with respect to time over whatever time interval of interest. Okay. In all the cases we'll be working with, these integrals will be relatively straightforward to perform. So anyway, if you have an impulse and momentum type of problem for a rigid body, then these th you'll write these three equations of motion, right? and you'll need to solve the three of those in order to find the final momentum, if that's what you're looking for. You can write the principle of impulse and momentum for systems, just like we did of particles. Right. And in this case, just like before, you add up the linear momentum for the entire system, calculate the impulse of the entire system, that will equal the final momentum. You have to do linear and x, linear and y, and the moment impulse now, since you have a rigid body. And when you write it for... So I'll write it that way. You have to write the linear momentum in x, y, and the moment as well. And again, internal forces, mo impulses, cancel out. All right? Just like we saw in particles. But now we have to keep track of the angular momentum as well as the linear momentum. We'll see the notion of conservation of momentum a lot uh, in the principle of impulse and momentum, just like we did for particles. Right. So if there are no external forces in a particular direction, then momentum, linear momentum, will be conserved. But now we also have So as before, if there's no force in a particular direction, for example in the x direction, then we can say that momentum is conserved in the x direction, similarly y. We also have the added benefit now that uh, if there's no net moment about a particular point, we can say that angular momentum is conserved about that point. That's an important thing to note. When you, remember, when you're calculating angular momentum, it's about a particular point. And you get to choose what point or the point about which you take those moments. 
right? So sometimes it's convenient to pick a particular point. For example, if a rigid body is pinned in a particular place, a bar pinned at one end and rotating, that's, the pin point is probably a good place to sum moments. And you may have the case where there's zero net moment, which means angular momentum will be conserved. So sometimes that's a convenient thing to keep in mind for impulse and momentum type problems. Last are impact type problems. Or in these cases we can, just like before, we can ignore non-impulsive forces, that is forces whose impulses will be a lot, a lot smaller than those associated with the collision process. Okay, And so we will write our equations for conservation of momentum, but now we'll do them both linear and angular momentum. All right. So again, those three equations we saw a moment ago, we'll be using all of those for the system, right? Both particles together. The, the impact forces, the impulses related to those are going to cancel out, so we'll have conservation of momentum. We try to find a place where we have conservation of angular momentum, all right? And then we also have the restitution equation. Now it's important to recognize that the restitution equation it looks just the same as we saw before and it applies in the normal direction relative to the impact. So again A and B are the two particles or the two rigid bodies, excuse me, that are colliding. But the thing is we have to write this equation, these velocities are the velocities at the point of impact. Right? It's not just any velocity on a rigid body, right? It's the velocity of the point where the two rigid bodies impact each other. Okay? So we have to keep that in mind as we write these and in the normal direction. Aside from that, the development is just the same as it was for collision of particles.